Welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Stefano, and this is When Leaders Talk, a podcast about leadership, but most importantly, about leaders. We are at episode eight, and today's guest is a great guest, Stefano Ferri. Stefano Ferri is an Italian expert in communications, but he's also very well known for being a cross-dresser. He is actually probably in Italy the most famous cross-dresser that you can meet on talk and he's very active on all the social networks. Stefano's story is very interesting both for personal leadership and leadership because of course to understand what it was and to reach the, that awareness of being a cross-dresser and to actually have other people in his life accepting what he was has been a, a journey, a very interesting journey. And also on the side of leadership, he is the owner of a company that uh, actually operates in uh, communication and public relations. So Stefano's story, as I said, is very um, inspiring for the courage, he, the, for the bravery of facing uncharted waters. But the journey of Stefano actually starts from self-awareness. So we've been repeating this a little bit during the conversation. Self-awareness and self-acceptance. Just imagine you're a person who realizes that the life that you're living is not really the life that you want. You're not in contact with your nature. Seven has been brave enough to face those challenges and reach the happiness, reach the person he is now. I mean, of course, his journey is not over yet, and he's still fighting for civil rights, not only in Italy, but also abroad. And we actually pointed out how a person like him cannot travel in other countries where cross-dressing is not accepted. And yet, his hope for a better world is strong. So, Stefan, as I said, is a leader too. He has a company, and his leadership style is actually based on smiling. That's what he said. He smiles, he makes people happy. He likes to make people happy. I must say that this interview was really interesting from many, many aspects, not only for the person Stefan is, but also for the ideas that he shares. Well, I will leave you to this episode, but before, as always, let me remind you that you can subscribe to this podcast and you can follow me on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, if you want more information, you can go on masteryourc.com. Well, with no further ado, I will leave you to Stefano. Welcome, welcome Stefano, welcome Stefano Ferri to When Leaders Talk. It's really a pleasure to have uh, to have you here with us. Welcome to you, my friend. Uh, it's a pleasure for me being here, and I thank you for the kind invitation. I'm sure oh, we're we'll having a good time. I, I'm actually really honored to have you here. You are such a special person, and I know actually you recently have been in New York, and uh, everything went well, actually greatly. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, today we're gonna, like every episode of this podcast, we will focus mainly on leadership and personal leadership. I am really happy to have you here because you have a story to tell that is both on, on the both side of personal leadership and leadership. You have achieved a lot as a leader, as a person, you have your uh, company, your PR company, but also well, your life has gone through different phases and we discussed earlier three phases of your life and how you had to empower yourself to be the person you are. Yeah. Okay, so, but let's start with my, uh, the first question I always ask and I would like to ask. So, do you have a definition of leadership? And if you have it, will you share it with us? Uh, a leader is... Uh, <clears throat> is a man who um, gets to be uh, obeyed by the others mm. uh, uh, in force of his authority, which means that he's a man or a woman, a person, who has the talent of convincing the others that he is right, okay. thus, letting, thus letting the others be uh, happy to follow him. 
Hmm. As a consequence of what I just said, uh, given, so to say, 100 of people self-defining leaders, I think just two of them are actual leaders. Okay. <sighs> I, I totally agree. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's easy to say, and sometimes you read on LinkedIn, you know, oh, successful leaders, successful leaders, and the world yeah. apparently is so full of successful leaders. And at the end of the day, probably there's no... About, I just laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I totally agree with you. So, uh, but I'm curious because you say something that actually is, uh, is interesting. You say the leader is right. That's what you say. You, the leader has to convince the others, is, is the people that are working with, with them, that you know, the leader is right, he's always right. How can you convince them about this? Oh, it's a matter of charisma. It's a matter of personal attitude. It's a matter of efficiency and efficacy, effectiveness, sorry, of speaking and uh, you know, uh, influencing the others with one's thought. And so it's charisma, what uh, political scientists call charisma. That's it. Okay, yeah, that's it. It's, it's easy to say. <laughs> easy to say, but you no, know, of course, it's much, much easier to say than to do. Huh. Uh, I think it's 100 uh, uh, self-defining leaders to two actual leaders. This is the ratio. You know, which means it is actually difficult finding person, and this is why we find so uh, uh, <clears throat> so few leaders, and we find so many people of power. People of power is not leader. No, absolutely, and, and we go back to what we said earlier about you know the, the, the number of real leaders that you can meet in your life or any any place. <laughs> well, but let me let me ask you this question then: What if the leader is wrong? What if the leader says something wrong? You know, and and you know, we and we had in the history with so many examples of leaders that at the end of the day they say. Uh, so many awful things, and despite having the charisma you know, and having all those people um, following them, they still actually um, made a disaster, if you want. And I'm, I'm just thinking about Hitler, probably is the, is the easiest. Yes, I was thinking the same. I was thinking at the same person. So yes, what, is, what if a leader is broke? Um... Well, it's a tragedy, both in politics and in company, okay, in the in, in, in a private environment. But there is a, there is a sign, there is a signal which people uh, uh, should be should be care of. Um, if a person following a leader acknowledges that he is actually scared of that leader, mm -hmm. and he or she follows him or her because he's scared of him, panic. Because it means not, it doesn't mean that this person is not a leader. Okay, Hitler was a leader actually. It means that it is dangerous to follow him. Okay, yeah, it is dangerous. I mean, it means that he is, uh, they are, I mean, he's or she is um, uh, close you to must be always. You must be always happy to follow a leader, if the leader is right. If you feel fear, and mm. uh, 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 nonetheless you keep following him or her, it means that he most probably is not right. <laughs> so it's dangerous, it might turn very dangerous for you and others to follow him. So, um... I understand it. One, one, but in, in the previous conversation I had with other, you know, guests like you here, uh, actually, uh, we talked a lot about how a, a leader should have like an open mind, you know, and um, listen, you know, listen to the people working with them, and uh, these people being able to to say, oh, no, I, I do not agree of this. I, I think in a different way. 
right? And then approach and actually this will empower them to contribute in a more effective way. How how would you see that with a, with a, starting the, the, from the point that the leader is always right? No, I, I, I already said that the, the, uh, the difference is uh, uh, between being happy or not being happy to follow a leader. Hmm. Okay. That is the, the gimmick, okay, to find out whether such a leader is right or not. It, it's a matter of the courage of the people uh, uh, following or the followers of that leader. It's a matter of the courage to rebel against him if necessary. And most of the times, it's not possible to find out such a courage. And this is Absolutely. the tragedy. Absolutely. So you as a leader, you have your company, you have your people, people working with you. How do you make them happy then? Oh, <laughs> 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 I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I always try to smile, uh, even in uh, difficult times, because I think that smiling is the very only thing to do anywhere. What's the smile? What's the use of crying? Uh, sang Charlie Chaplin, and he was right. He was actually a leader, after all. He was actually a leader. And that's it. That is the word of a true leader uh, resist, endures. They, they keep enduring, okay, as time goes by. So I keep on smiling, and I guess this is a, almost enough. Then I am polite, yeah. But I don't want to speak to speak too much about myself, you know. And, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I prefer to get humbled. Um, um, but anyway, I prefer, apart from smiling, to treat people well, being kind to, to all of them. Um, I, I gather from so many corporate realities I know about that not so many people, uh, given their position of power, put in a position of power, Treat those people, treat their people, their followers kindly. And this is a shame. It's really a pity. Oh yeah, I can, I can bring my experience here. I mean, and I've been uh, in an environment for 31 years. I've been in the military and not always you find people who really like to treat you well, especially if they got this authority coming from the rank and the position and they don't feel the need to kind of um foster you know their their authority you know and and make it better so they don't feel the need of, of letting other people feel good as you say happy because everything comes with the rank okay everything comes with the position so it's yeah. it's, it's it's a difficult uh and demotivating actually situation yes. and unfortunately have been there yeah so, demotivating demotivating you said the word you said the word because people who are not treated as they expect to be treated, who are continuously best or attacked, uh, get demotivated. And demotivation uh, uh, is the beginning of the end. Absolutely. Motivation is the fuel for, yeah. for a person or, fuel, or a team. Without fuel, no engine keeps going. Exactly. exactly. I like this. I like this. I like this idea of the fuel, the energy, you know, and, and the, the, it can be a car, yeah. it can be, for me, a more, yeah. more like a ship. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. still something that is, is propelled and it needs to, to be pushed. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sebano. Um, but of course, um, that is one thing that I have to talk to you because you are probably, at least in Italy, you are the most famous cross-dresser, if not the only. Um, so, and you actually have... In, maybe in Italy, I'm the the crossdresser with the greatest awareness. Maybe yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the, the 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 one who is really active actually in uh, in promoting uh, freedom and uh, a different way of style, a different style, yeah. if you want. 
So, and when we had our earlier discussion a few days ago, when we first met over the phone, you said that your life has gone through three phases. One was a kind of uh, darkness, if you want, and then there was the awakening, and then more like a, more your self um, realization, you know, and it's the Stefano that we are meeting here. What, what were we aware of the qualities that you had to take out to use the most in those three phases of your life. I'm sure that there were different qualities. Can you can you like? Um... Uh, well, in the first part of my life, uh, resilience. I was lucky to have the opportunity of studying because study was a uh, a big. Um, big uh, you know, I don't want to say. Uh, uh, um, lifeline it was a big lifeline studying because he, it compelled me to think of some of something else rather than my personal situation which wasn't clear uh, uh, even to myself the second part of my life uh, was dramatic i mean during the transition you know during the transition was it was very difficult and uh, because you know becoming a cross dresser is a result of a, very, of a very long process. None uh, uh, wakes up in the morning, decided to, to put on a 12 centimeter heel from scratch. Uh, 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 believe it took me as many as 14 years. I started in 1995, I ended up in 2009. In 1995, I was 29 and felt the need to make my wardrobe more feminine. Uh, mm, mm, said this way it sounds calm but actually as i told you before behind this need there were three decades of suffering of apathy um, uh, anyway the fashion of the time mid 90s helped me a little because on the catwalks thanks to a few designers one could see the first slightly effeminate men and 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 i in the wake of this went to buy products and clothes that looked like women's clothes but were also worn by men, such as, I remember, shirts in organza, Danamask jackets, satin trousers. And I uh, kept on repeating to myself as a justification, these are men's clothes, so I can wear them. Then, seven years later, in 2002, I remember, I saw a black kilt in a downtown shop and just couldn't resist. I bought it, and since then, in another seven years, I got to revolutionize my wardrobe again. This time, going to choose clothes in the women's departments. Uh, uh, so in 2009, at the end of these 14 years of transformation, I had a 100% feminine wardrobe. Um, why, why did I say that uh, this all has been dramatic? Because when this thing exploded inside me, I didn't understand what was happening. Uh, generally speaking, we are always afraid of everything we do not know. And thus I felt embarrassed. And out of fear, I started doing something that should never be done. I asked for permission. At the time, I was the editor-in-chief of magazine for tourism and events, and I asked the permission of my boss, of my clients, of everyone, okay, to introduce myself on various occasions dressed in women's clothes. But, uh, you know, getting your hands on foment sexism and racism where they are already around. You have to be proud of who you are and in this case of what you are wearing, there is a difference between a proud man and one who is scared. And it shows, it shows. I began to think of that question being absurd due to the many answering me, what the hell are you asking me? <laughs> and that made me think about it. To find out proper courage, I had to go anyway a long way in psychotherapy. So in short, starting, starting a cross-dressing experience is socially complicated, just on all the beginnings of really new things. Human nature, you know, resists deviations from individual or collective comfort zones. 
the first woman who wore a pair of trousers in Italy in 1896, 1896, yes, was arrested, tried, and jailed for indecency. <laughs> if compared to her, I have been lucky, but also uh, I, I can just uh, conclude that uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, tell you an anecdote, in 2016, on the occasion of the release of my second novel, I participated as a speaker in a conference on cross-dressing at the Turin Book Fair. I spoke for an hour in a, a, a sheet dress and high heels, interviewed by a journalist, a female journalist specializing in the history of clothing, when suddenly, towards the end, I paid attention to detail. I took the microphone and pronounced these words. Has anyone realized that on this stage there are two cross-dressers and not just one? Because actually, the, the female journalist who conversed with the man in sheet, dress and high heels was wearing a jacket, trousers and Oxford lace-ups. Nobody had noticed it, neither among the speakers nor among the audience. Why? Because we are so used nowadays in the 21st century to seeing women dressed as a man that we will never think of giving them the title of cross-dresser. We perceive them as normal because time has passed, a lot of time has passed. I must uh, just let a lot of time pass also for me and all the problem will be solved. <laughs> You have to live up to live a well, not not a too long life. I mean, it's, maybe it will happen soon. I mean, as you say, it took um, a few decades for women to not be arrested dressing of yeah. men's clothes, right? And yeah. actually, uh, there is a beautiful TEDx talk that you held a few years yeah. ago when you actually pointed out that yeah. the dress you were you were wearing at the time yeah. was not a woman's dress. Yeah. Right. I mean, and actually, you have to break. You want to break this this condition that we have. You know, this is women's. This is men's. Like pink is the color for girls, and blue is the color for boys. It's a um, it's a um, an adventurous journey. And uh, I want to add something to what you say, because you mentioned resilience, but of course there is a lot of courage. But well, first of all, there is a lot of self-awareness, who we really are, what is important for you. And um, taking a segue from what I was just saying, what is it actually important for you? What is your North Star? My? North Star. North? Star. No star, excuse me. Oh, well, it's happiness. <laughs> uh, 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 and I'm not original, <laughs> of course, thinking this way. But uh, uh, so the, the question, I, I just turned the question into what is happiness for you? Happiness is a three-step degree, okay? Okay. Um, and it's different, of course, for anyone. But anyone must go through these three steps. First of all, um, gather, understand what you really want from your life. Okay, you have got to understand it because no one really suggested to you. You are alone in front of this question. Anyone, any person is alone in front of this question. So, but first of all, understand. I understood. Undergoing a long way of suffering, of course, and so on. I understood wearing women's clothes. Second step, get it, okay? And I got it. <laughs> of, course, of course, it was very difficult because the world of 20 years ago was not the world of nowadays. Western world has gone through a, 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 an enormous change of mentality. Uh, uh, 20 years ago, it was difficult also here, uh, and now it is... Uh, admittedly, it's not difficult, that difficult any longer in Europe, okay, in Western Europe, in the Western world. So many people have understood. Third, this is the most important one. 
keep on deciding it once you've got it. If you get it and then you stop desiring it, you stop wishing for it, you have to begin to, to, to start again from the beginning because your preferences have changed. Yeah, well... I am lucky enough to keep on deciding what I decided uh, uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, I mean, you have achieved it. And then, and then you are um, surely a success story in uh, among the cross-dresser. And we, we know that actually it's not the same everywhere in the world. So no, this, of course. Right. So um, actually, I remember there was a post that you published I, I read it on LinkedIn, that's how we get connected, about uh, football and Qatar and as it, there was a picture, I guess, of you uh, with your heels and, and, a, and a football or a soccer ball, it depends on which part of the world you are. Yeah. So what is your vision? What is, your, what is the thing that you really hope to see in, in a few years? Um, the I don't hope to see it in a few years. I am resigned of not seeing it in my lifetime. I hope that my daughter in her lifetime will see the total uh, total success of cross-dressing, of male cross-dressing everywhere in the world up to such a level that uh, no one will feel the need to call it cross-dressing any longer. Exactly the way it is happening for women. Okay, but it's it, 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 it will take centuries. I won't see it, but I'm sure it will happen, you know, it will happen. Um, there's something very interesting I can tell you um, about the origin of uh, men uh, giving up fashion, which happened at the end of the 18th century. Uh, almost a, uh, about the t at about the time of the French Revolution. Uh, what did the French revolutionaries say? They had a message, which now has proven to be, to be the right one, successful. Uh, they said, look, citoyens, citizens, be aware that any of you may become a king in terms of course of power and wealth. Um, it's not necessary to uh, be born in a wealth family, in a noble family. You may become rich and powerful if you work hard. It's well-earned uh, uh, wealth, okay? And this was made possible by a revolutionary invention taking place in, 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 in England almost in the same decades, the steam engine. The steam engine so multiplied to such a sort of magic potion, okay, the, the, for, for, for workshops, okay, for works, uh, workshops, small shops, which turned, thanks to the steam engine, into industries. Big industries meant big money. And, you know, money and power arouse human beings much more than high heels. This is uh, written in, in, in gold characters in our, uh, in our DNA. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> so people of two and a half centuries ago made no exemption. Men saw the opportunity of becoming rich, and so they they made a barter. It's what the um, American political scientists call the great male resignation. I suggest you should uh, uh, find out something more on the internet, a great male resignation. They took women, they took women and told them, woman, I give you anything. I give you the wigs, which were worn by men. I give you the makeup, which was worn by men in the 18th century. I give you the uh, uh, velvets, I give you the high heels, which were worn by noble men, okay, in the 18th century to express being noble, nobility. I give you all the beauty, everything, but as a barter, you give me the power. Women say, said yes, 
uh, uh, it's difficult to, to believe nowadays because, of course, uh, they were not nowadays women. They were the women of 250 50 years ago. They were very different. Uh, uh, it was a very Christian-based society. So it was uh, uh, taken as a consequence of the Christian message that women just stay under men, under the men. Uh, it was compliant to the New Testament's message. Under this barter, the story, the society evolved smoothly for more than one century. Till the first woman complained at the beginning of the 20th century, just uh, <clears throat> raised her hand and said, excuse me, there's something I, 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 I haven't understood. Why should I stay closed in, into my room? Uh, 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 why? Uh, it's not clear to me. I don't know how this thing ended up. Maybe it ended up with her death. But uh, uh, it was a very brave act. Because, you know, we are speaking of the beginning of the 20th century, where all the uh, protagonists, all the leaders of the famous barter taking place at the end of the 18th centuries, century were dead. There was no personal memory of the beginning of this era. Okay. Uh, and so everything was perceived as a law of nature. Men is perfectly normal that are dressed this way and go for power. And women is perfectly normal that look for their beauty and nothing else. Why is it it's not normal? It's not written in the stars, not written in heaven. It's just a convention decided by a few men at the end of the 18th century. And so uh, what we call women, female emancipation, doesn't mean emancipation of women from men. No, it's the emancipation of women from this butter, just for this, from this butter. Women taking back their power, the power that this butter forbade them. So women getting back to work, getting back to a career, becoming presidents, CEOs, professionals, ministers, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, women aiming for this power are nothing more and nothing less than women aiming to give up that barter. Men haven't given up, didn't give up this barter yet, haven't given up this barter yet apart from me and a few other ones. Because uh, for men, uh, you know, giving up this butter means uh, uh, looking for their beauty. Okay, caring for their looks. Uh, not just being cross-dressers, of course, we speak about dandies, we speak about metrosexuals. Uh, uh, there are very many categories because each man is different from the others. My category is cross-dressing, and it's, it's just a matter of personality. So what I am positive of is that this process uh, uh, will come to an end with the complete uh, renounce, the complete resignment to this barter, because this barter is unnatural. Uh, uh, the, the only thing that nature tells us is the human beings are free, free of provocative. So, <clears throat> Being constricted, being convicted into, into uh, 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 a butter cage is not a natural uh, co condition if lasting uh, 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 without a term, without an end, as it was supposed to be. This is a natural condition. And as the same way, with, the same way women uh, 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 have started and almost completed their way through this, uh, even men are beginning their way through this. And, and I am one of the evidences. Absolutely. And you actually pointed out how actually there are categories of men who they take a very good care of the look and how they dress. And, um, and you know, now there are products for men and, and so on and so forth. So there is actually also an economy growing on this on this part, you know, and probably the, what now is called cross-dressing, it, it will evolve in something very similar. 
And I remember, you're not the only cross-dresser you can read about. And actually, there is a famous one even in Germany who is very... Uh, well, yeah. I know uh, Of course. <laughs> 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 of course, you know, and then and that's... Uh, but now, now you can, I know that, I know your point when you say that you cannot travel in all the countries. There are countries where a crossdresser will never be allowed to get in. No, of course. This is a shame, of course. This right. is a shame because, of, just for instance, I, I will never travel to Dubai. Just for instance, okay. Right. Uh, okay, I can live also without Dubai, but uh, it's, it's a pity. It's a pity because I'm not harmful. I, I, I'm not a criminal, I, I'm not a thief, I'm not a murderer, you know. <laughs> so there's no, it's wrong. It's, it's wrong to forbid me going everywhere. And uh, this is a matter of ideology. But well, I people hope... need time and I give time to people. Right, and what I admire, what I admire, that for you there, is, there are no compromises. It's like probably someone might think, well, dress up with a pair of trousers and travel around the world wherever you want. But some of course, people, some people can. I can't because this is the way. This is the way I'm. Right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. This is you my are, way. you are coherent, and you want to respect yourself. And you know, uh, I'm guessing, but I can see your face, and uh, uh, what I see is that you, if you would never compromise your identity just to yeah. be free to travel to Qatar or Emirates or any other of those places. I don't know whether this happens in my lifetime even. You know. <laughs> I, I understand that. I understand that. <laughs> but you're young. I mean, you, you never know. You're young. Revolutions and cultural revolutions. No? Thanks, for, thanks for telling me I'm young. I'm about to turn 57. Okay. I'm, I, I'm yeah. in my 50s. I'm still in my 50s, but barely. Barely. Right. <laughs> well, you have the, like other 50 some years ago, so don't worry. <laughs> and, on, and now there are a lot of studies on actually making our lives even longer, so you never know. But other than that, it is not our field. Yeah. Um, let's let's linger a little bit on your on your life. And uh, as as I said earlier, there were like a kind of three phases in your life. Yeah. Which which was the biggest challenge that you faced? And what helped you going through it? Oh, uh, understanding myself. Mm. Understanding why. Uh, at the beginning, I had no idea I was a crossdresser. No idea. I just felt the need to wear some damask jackets, which doesn't mean you're a crossdresser, of course. Of course. Uh, it came. It came uh, 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 very, 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 very quietly. In a lot of time, progressively, uh, and I felt the need, as I told you before, for psychotherapy because um, you know uh, I turned aggressive in behavior, mostly in behavior, in words, okay, in behavior, because I was scared. I was scared of what happened. I was scared of the unknown. Each time you face the unknown, you get scared, okay? And this is normal. You are scared of everything you don't know and you have to face. Uh, 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 we are animals after all. Uh, uh, when does an animal bite you? When he is scared of you. Same thing happens to, to us, same thing happened to me. Uh, so to control this, uh, uh, Right. negative side, negative side of my personality, I got to psychotherapy. And in psychotherapy, I understood during a few years. I, uh, uh, I've, uh, I've told the whole of the story in my autobiographical novel, Cross uh, which is uh, for one third, at least for one third, based uh, 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 in, in, in my psychiatrician psychotherapy studio. And I uh, just summed up a few years of psychotherapy. Uh, for, of course, I, 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 I couldn't tell the whole of the years. I just summed up them in, in a few months to make them interesting, okay? Uh, and got to understand myself, the reason why I was turning that way uh, and what I had to call me. 
So cross test, okay. It is a matter of statistics, just remember, because if any old man were cross testers, no one would be cross tested. So I just call cross test, I call, call myself cross tester. I just put a label of, on, 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 on myself as a cross tester just because I am the only one or one of the very, very, very few. But you know, after understanding, anything turned easier, much easier. And you are enforcing the concept of the importance of self-awareness and yes. self-acceptance, you know, and has, this is, so first of all, you need to be aware of the person you are. What is important for you? What, what does matter to you? What is your, what are your values? What is the things that you want, the goal you want to, you want to achieve? And yeah. then you have to accept the person you are because you might have some weaknesses, you know, you might have some flaws, you might have, yeah. I mean, none of us is perfect, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so which is your biggest weakness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about self-awareness. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a big, uh, I got a very big weakness, which I have no difficulty to admit, of course. I tend to lose my head uh, when I'm out of control of something. Oh, oh. I admit it. This is my big weakness. I don't uh, know if you I'm sorry, go ahead. Now, after so many years, I guess it will, it will never get to be solved. Um, I, I, would fight, I would push back this idea. Actually, it can be solved. And, you know, there is, a, there is a, an interesting approach that is called positive intelligence that actually identifies what normally are called saboteurs. And one of the, for example, I am pretty much like you, probably is the name. <laughs> but <laughs> my, my strongest saboteur is called the controller, is this need to have control on everything goes, going, goes, no, goes on around us. Uh, but you know, there is actually, there is a way, there is a way if you, uh, if you want to, reduce a little bit the power of this, of this uh, controlling person that you have inside of you, that there is a way. But it's not why we're here. Okay, uh, there is another thing you told me uh, in our conversation over the phone a few days ago, and it was the challenge that you had when you had to face actually your family and to tell your wife um, what you felt. I don't know if you want to touch upon this a little bit and tell us once again how it was and, and, and what about, was the winning quality for you. Uh, telling about my family, you know, my willing, my my winning quality was first of all having the luck. It's it, just a matter of luck, being lucky, uh, being lucky enough to uh, meet a woman who unconsciously loved cross dressing. It's a bit uncon <laughs> unconsciously, unconsciously, because uh, uh, it was difficult. When I got this transformation, uh, it, it started wearing skirts, uh, uh, high heels. It was very, 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 very difficult for my for my wife. But she never left me. We never divorced. We kept on living together, and we became parents uh, uh, of a of a nowadays girl, a teenager. Uh, which means that um, when she met me, she understood, sort of in conscious understanding, that uh, I got to become a costessa. Because, you know, she met me during my uh, first transformation, when I uh, wore effeminate, like, okay, uh, male, male trousers, male jackets, and so maybe she saw something even beyond her understanding, her conscious understanding. Uh, with my with my daughter, there's never been any problem because she's a part of the fluid generation, so just, she doesn't care about it. Like in in no one uh, uh, of the other teenager teenagers cares about me wearing dress, wearing dresses or skirts. They don't have prejudices, such prejudices. Okay, so it was. Twice, twice lucky. As for my family of origin, um, my mother 
never got to know it because uh, uh, she died uh, uh, before I find I found the courage of uh, 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 coming out. <clears throat> My sister was the only one uh, to whom I made this coming out. After a few years, I showed her my wardrobe and told her, this is my wardrobe. She made this. This was her reaction. But after this reaction, she told me, well, you don't damage anyone after all. Uh, 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 so I think there's no problem. I expected such a reaction from my sister because she's part of the generation which would disapprove, but understands. Okay. <laughs> my generation is because of 50. She's in well, 50 as well. Uh, my generation as well, so yeah, I understand. <laughs> wise, wise. The most, the most uh, uh, nice thing happened with my father. Hmm. My father, who uh, uh, died uh, less than one year ago, at the age of 97, so very, very, very old, but when these things happened was uh, 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 in his eighties. Um, well, uh, I was scared of, her of his reaction, potential reaction, because you know he was a fascist. Uh, he was born, <laughs> yes, okay. because he was born in nineteen twenty-five, which means he, yeah. he, he was risen under fascism. He received such an imprinting, okay, uh, which I wasn't likely to to face, okay? And so when I uh, uh, went to uh, to visit them, both of both my parents, because my mom was still alive, and then after her death, when I uh, go when I went to visit him, I just wore jeans, uh, uh, t-shirts, uh, female jeans, female t-shirts, but you know it's jeans, t-shirts, so it was almost uh, almost normal. Okay. <laughs> when uh, one day a weird thing happened, I was desperate. I I told about this in my novel. I was really desperate for personal uh, financial reasons, uh, and and I uh, went to him to ask for help. Um, I was so desperate that I simply forgot to ch to get changed. I showed up in a uh, uh, skirt and high heels and I understood I was wearing skirt and high heels after ringing his bell. So it was too late to escape. And I noticed in the dramatic uh, <clears throat> seconds immediately following this bell, I noticed that he looked at me and just didn't say anything, okay? Uh, the the uh, 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 his his mm, mm, his gesture uh, was just like yours now, totally normal. This way we spoke this way, and I asked myself why, why, why the hell? Him, the the, the big faces. Why? Uh, uh, I wanted to ask him. I didn't find the courage uh, that day, but a few months later, I found it. We were dining at a restaurant, just the two of us, no other. And I asked him, how did you understand? And this was his answer. Dear son, you've got a daughter who now is a kid, but of course is going to grow up. And once adult, he will leave you and your wife to start off with her own life as it happened to you, okay? And I was left alone because you got married, you made your family, and this is just normal. But believe me, if also to you happened what happened to me, which means seeing your daughter for 10 years, not one day, not one week, not even one year, 10 years, wearing the same pair of jeans, <laughs> <laughs> well, you would ask yourself a few questions. <laughs> very smart, very smart. That's a it's great answer. Smart. That's a great yeah, answer. So he understood, he understood gradually <laughs> during those 10 years. 
<laughs> like, what the hell? This guy has only one pair of jeans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But tell you, he kept so he kept seeing me just with one pair of jeans on. Okay, <laughs> I didn't notice it. Why? Why I didn't understand it? Because I was scared. Being scared completely uh, ruins, spoils your capacity of understanding. I didn't understand what I myself was doing. You know, <laughs> it, of course. It's curious, but this is what happens. Once you're scared. So, Stefano, you have become, I guess, a, a model for many people for two reasons. One is because you impersonate, if you want, the, the, some, the, the, the battle. You are actually fighting battles for civil rights in, in a way to have people not being discriminated in Italy or around the world as a, as a, as a cross-dresser. And the other thing is, of course, as a cross-dresser itself, you know, you are the symbol of cross-dressing, at least in Italy. And I know that you actually spread your, your word in, in many other countries, as you mentioned earlier. You've been in New York a few days ago. Uh, also, thanks to you, because if, if this uh, English conversation gets online, I guess it would be uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. to also in the US as well. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I'm happy, you know, and I'm 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 very happy to to have met you uh, actually casually online on LinkedIn. So, um, but the, which was or which is actually your role model, the person you've been admiring, the person who inspired you the most? I don't want to look too self-confident, but no one. No one. Uh, 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 I didn't. I, I wasn't inspired by anyone, just because I was too scared of the unknown, as I told you before, to uh, uh, feel the need to, for some inspiration. I uh, in, in, during those years was just concentrated. Was, was just focused on saving me, on understanding, saving, uh, uh, trying to build up my life once again after the impact with cross destroyed it because I lost my job. And I was 39. I was not that young any longer. <laughs> Still very so, young. Look, <laughs> looking for inspiration is common of the people who uh, uh, are safe and smooth. I, I, I didn't have time to, 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 let, to let myself be inspired. I got to save me. I was scared. I was in a very difficult personal situation. So I, I just needed to follow what I felt inside uh, after having understood it. And this is all that I did. But you showed us that you have actually a, a deep knowledge of not the history of people fighting your, your battles earlier. You have a knowledge on how the dressing code has evolved through the years yeah. and through centuries. I, may, I can say, sorry for interrupting you, I can say that I've often very often thought of the first woman I told you before wearing trousers in 1896. The problem is that I, I don't know her name. No <laughs> one knows her name. I always, the, the, you, no week passes without me thinking at least once to her. Yeah, this I can say. Okay, uh, it's, it's, and it's fair, of course. It's, uh, I understand you mentioned her. 1996, and she was the first, first. cross-dresser, <laughs> at least very documented. Unlucky, very unlucky, much unluckier than me, of course, because she was driven to jail. No one has driven me to jail, at least to date. <laughs> so. Oh, that, and then that's beautiful. And I understand that it's, uh, in a way, it's, can be, it can be, can you consider her a kind of reference for you a little bit and while you were studying it, kind of? Okay, she had the courage, even in a darkest time. Now there is a kind of opening, open mentality. Reference, I wouldn't say reference, I'd say encouragement. Uh, I tell, I say to myself, if she did it, I can do it. Yeah, sometimes I've thought about it. As we say, you can tell it. Yeah. You can tell your story. 
<laughs> but ten, 10 years ago was not this way, of course. I had no story to tell because I was in progress. I was still in progress. Such, th such thoughts were helpful in those days. I understand. OK, now we have a, a few minutes left. And um, I want to ask you a couple of more questions. Going back, actually, uh, I know we, we, let's leave the cross-dressing part. It is important in your life. But as I said, there's another part that I really uh, am interested in, is you as a leader, that something we touch upon at the beginning of this interview. And you have your company, you have people working with you. If you had to define your leadership style, how would you define it? My leadership style? Uh, smiling. <laughs> I even don't perceive it uh, as a leadership style. I just perceive it as uh, being myself. Being myself and treat people the same way I would like people to treat me. I, I heard this. This one, someone said this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a few thousand years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> someone in the name of whom so many people treat the others the way they don't want to be treated. This is quite interesting. It is, it is. But we don't want to open now a, a breach with a religion, oh, <laughs> the course, Catholic course. Church or any of those. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so, well, th then with this will lead us to my uh, final question. And it is, if someone comes to you and say, Stefano, I admire you as a leader. I admire you as a person. And I, I would like to be as, as successful as you are. What kind of suggestion would you, would you give to this person? Uh, I would, I would uh, tell him or her, you have just begun your own way. Because, uh, uh, not, not quite because you admire me, but because you start thinking positively on your success or when you're being successful means taking the first step towards success. Keep on going. I'm sure you've even, found, I, you've even found your own way, the whole of the way. You just have to keep going. This is what I would tell him. That's beautiful and inspiring. So, Stefano, thank you very much for having spent this hour with us. Thank you for Thanks sharing you. your, your view of the world, your yeah. struggles, your adventures, and your successes, and for being such a strong yeah. uh, and courageous person. Thank you so much. Too, most kind of you. <laughs>